Today we're going to look at some options for coax cable stripping tools. All right, so today's video is going to be just a quick little comparison of some of these different coax stripping tools that I have. I'll show you how they work. If you're looking for a full how-to tutorial on stripping and preparing and installing your own coaxial cable connectors, then I have a video I made on that. It goes into great detail for crimped and compression connections, and I will put a link to that in the description of this video. And let me just say that the stripping tools I'm going to show you here for coax cable are really meant for the DIYer, hobbyist, or homeowner that is looking to put together a few lengths of coax cable for their TV antenna or satellite dish. They're not really meant for the professional installer. If you're a pro installer, you're going to be using tools that are much more sophisticated and much more expensive than these. So any stripping tool you use will work fine as long as it can take the cable from this to this. And it has to perform a two-step cut. And the first one cuts away this outer white jacket here and exposes all of these braided wires here. This is known as braided shielding. And beneath that is a layer of foil that's wrapped around this white inner core here that's known as a dielectric that insulates this copper wire here the copper wire is the center conductor that carries the tv signal and all of this stuff around it basically shields it from any outside interference and possible signal loss and uh, that's what your stripping tool has to be able to do in order to properly fit a coax connector on the end of this wire. Installing a connector on the end of a piece of coax cable involves preparing the cable properly. And the only way to do that is to use a tool like one of these. A lot of people might reach for a utility knife to prepare this cable, but I would advise against that because using a knife doesn't exactly leave a very clean finish. And it's really important to prepare the cable properly if your connection is going to work right. It's not that a knife won't work, it's just that it's awkward, a little more time consuming, and it's just really not the right tool for this job. Now, if you're a DIYer looking to make your own coaxial cable, as long as you have a stripping tool that will allow you to properly prepare the coaxial cable, you don't even have to have a compression or crimp tool to put the ends on your cable. You can probably get away with using either a twist on or push on F connector. And in most cases, that's gonna work out just fine. All right, so let's take a look at some of the stripping tools we have here. This one here is probably the most common and least expensive. This is like a rotary type stripping tool and it has two blades inside here that make both cuts for you at once. And you can see one blade here sticks out a little further. That's the one that cuts the um, dielectric core away to expose the center conductor. And on the other side, there's a blade here. You can just see the tip of it. That's the one that cuts away the outer jacket. And this tool also comes with an onboard Allen key that you can use to adjust the cutting depth of the blades by turning these two little screws here. And here's how it works. Just put the cable in. And you want to basically line up the end of the cable with this little orange notch here. Give it a little squeeze and just a few turns. And you can see that it exposes the center conductor. And then the second cut exposes the braided shielding. Now with this type of stripping tool, there seems to be a common practice of spinning the tool and then ripping off the sheathing with the tool itself. And I would advise against that because all that's going to do is put a lot of wear and tear on the blades and possibly bend them or break them. And the tool is just not gonna last as long. The next tool looks a lot like a pair of wire strippers you would use on 
solid or stranded wire. This one's made specifically for coax cable though. So there's a blade here for cutting the outer jacket from RG6, one for RG59, and then this little tiny one here is for cutting off the dielectric to expose the center conductor. So here's how this one works. Just place the cable in the tool. We'll set it back about a half an inch or so, and it's in the RG6 blade and just squeeze like that and just pull slightly to separate the jacket and then just pull that off and now you have the braided shielding exposed just pull that back and out of the way now it's a little on the long side so you can always trim that if it's going to stick out the back of your connector later and now you take the tool again and place the dielectric in the uh, smallest blade there and set it back maybe about a quarter of an inch or so. That's about how much center conductor we want to expose and just squeeze and pop that off. And there it is, all ready for a connector. And the last one is actually a combination crimping and stripping tool. It has these hexagonal jaws here to crimp on connectors for RG6 and RG59. And as well, it has this round uh, jaw here that can be used to grasp the coax cable while you're pushing the connector on before you crimp it in place. And it also is able to strip away the outer jacket on RG6 and RG59 and also cut away for the center conductor exposure. And to use this, all you do is place the cable in the jaw about a half an inch or so down and just squeeze and then just twist a little bit and then just pull and that will release the jacket like that and then you can just draw back the braided shielding and then place the dielectric in the jaw like that, about a quarter of an inch or so. And it just squeeze and there it is. Some people might say that it makes more sense to cut away the dielectric first here to expose the center conductor. But I find with the yellow and the green tool here that it doesn't make a very clean cut when you do that. When you have to go through the outer jacket, you can see it crushes it a lot. And then it's really awkward to get that off there neatly. You end up with a lot of strands sticking out and you tend to tear the jacket as opposed to cutting it. So I find it easier to start with the outer jacket. Pick that off. And then once again, pull the braids back. And again, if they're long, just trim them after if they're gonna stick out the back of your connector and then make your center conductor cut. Just does a much cleaner job this way, especially for the DIYer. If you're only doing a few of these, it only takes a few extra seconds and it'll probably save you uh, some headache down the road. I also noticed when I tried to expose the center conductor with the first cut, in a lot of instances, I ended up cutting the center conductor wire right off. So all these tools work pretty well for cutting coax cable. Personally, I tend to use this one the most because it's the fastest, gets the job done really quick. These ones here are good. They're a little more pricey than this though, but it's pretty much whatever you can find, I guess, whatever's available to you. You could always order one online or check out your local hardware store or big box store to see what they have in stock. But there are a few varieties as far as coax cable stripping tools available. And if you're going to be preparing a lot of coaxial cable on your own, you really should think about getting some kind of a stripping tool to get the job done properly rather than just relying on an old pocket knife.